All right. Uh, so this topic is about overview of some packages of the Java library. Some packages in the sense Java itself has some um, uh, functionality that uh, it has provided. We call them libraries. Uh, so basically they have uh, their um, engineers have written some code that we can use to perform our day to day uh, functionalities. So, so one of the libraries is the string. Right. Uh, so as you know, string is actually a data type that we have and it is a is a sort of a complex data type. It's not primitive actually. It's a it's a representation of a class and a set of attributes and behaviors it has. Right. So if you talk in terms of object orientation, any object uh, will have uh, two main things in it. One is the attributes and the other one is the behavior, which is which are methods. OK. <coughs> so what a string is, it's actually a sequence of characters. Uh, characters, you know, like, right? Uh, this is a character A, B, C. And these are all alpha characters. And we have numeric characters as well. One, two. 25, uh, maybe 9. So 0 up to 9. So those are uh, numerics. So here, this is this is how uh, you create an object, right? So we are, we are telling, OK, S1 is of type string. And we are instantiating or creating an object out of string type. Um, so if you look at this, just uh, read this out from top to bottom. So this line, it is telling, OK, I'm creating a, a string object, right? So the created string object is assigned to this S1 um, uh, variable or the placeholder. And in this uh, situation or this point in time, it is empty string, right? If you do an S out here, what you get is an empty thing. And here is another way of doing the, doing a string, right? So basically, uh, there is a data type called uh, char, uh, which stands for characters. Um, and we are here, this is how you create an array, right? So you are telling chars2 is of type array, uh, is, is an array of type Array basically has multiple elements in it. So this is how you instantiate an array. So it's, it's been uh, assigned uh, this array, right? So this is, this is a, you know, braces. And within that, you can provide uh, the elements that you want in the array. So we have like three elements here, symbol A, B, and C. So this is a character array. So if you have a character array, char array, you can pass that char array to this uh, string construct. Okay. So when you are building a string or creating a string, new string, you can pass in a char array here. And this will give back a string uh, called ABC uh, with the value ABC. Right? Although you are passing in like single characters, what comes out is a single string uh, which is abc okay and here here's another uh, simple example but at this point uh, it is doing some uh, some more operation here for example now this charge three has one two three four five six characters in it right but you know uh, in java the indexing works from zero right from zero uh, go it goes up. So basically, so this has a zeroth index. This has one index one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So here I'm creating a string S3, new string. I'm passing this uh, 
character array to here, right? And I'm specifying two comma three. And here is the output, right? So just, just look at this, A, B, C, D, E, F. What I'm getting is C, D, E. So how can you correlate this thing with this? Just, just try to make sense of it. So we are passing in a charge three array. So that has one to six elements in it. And I am asking two. So two is basically it's, it's something to relate something related with the C one, right? So that is zero, one, and two second index. So it's it's basically the start index. So here you can see the comment as well. So it's the start index, and the second para the other parameter is the number of characters. So it starts with C, and including that C, you have three, you you should take three characters after that. So C D E. Okay. So that's that's how this uh, this thing came in output. And uh, here, here is another way of creating a string, which is uh, you say string S four is equal to new string, and you can tell you can pass in a uh, you know a string that is already been created. So here S3 is a string, right? And it has the value CDE. So you can pass that in here. And uh, now S4 has the value CDE, right? So these are different ways of uh, doing this. Uh, up to this point, anything unclear? Are you all clear about this? This one just creates it. This one we are passing in a character array. In this one we are passing in a character array and a subset of it. Starting from st uh, index two, uh, take three characters from there. One, two, three. Okay. In this case we are passing in an already created S3. Right, S3 already has CDE. So, C CDE will come here and uh, this will output CDE. Right. I hope I hope that's simple enough. And here this is about length. Right. Um, okay, let's uh, let's let's go into our code editor now again. All right, so this is about strings. What what I would do is new project, Java, next, create project. So this is about string fun. Right. I want uh, it to be open in this window. All right, write your code here. So string str one is equal to new str string. Okay. So at this point, if you s out str one, you see nothing, right? So that's empty. So actually you can pass in something like this, I guess, if you do that. What you get is Shiham, right? Instead of doing this, you can actually pass uh, first create a character array, right? Charles array. And this is how you do a character array, A, comma, B, comma z right and pass in this character array into here and create a string all right a b z and for example 
if this is C, this is D, this is uh, E, this is F, right? We have that. Here you will see those six characters, right? And also, uh, as I uh, mentioned, you can, uh, you know, take a subset of this using chars. Uh, instead of CDE, let's go for a different one, DEF. So what you should do is 0, 1, 2, 3, start from 3. And how many characters you want? 1, 2, 3, right? 3. So if you do that, Okay, what you get is DEF. So, and then what was, what was the other variant, variation? Let's see. All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, then we can pass in a string as well. So, that is basically this. So, we have created a string here. Oh, Say, for example, if I create str2, right, so that's str2. And you can create a str3 here using my str2. Right, if I print this thing, Okay, I have a str2 which has the value shiham and I am passing that string and creating a new string which is str3 and if I print this out, I should get shiham. All right, so that's the, those are the uh, ways of creating it and here, if you want to take, uh, you know, count how many characters you have here, you can basically do uh, length. I, I want the length of str2, so I would say str2 dot length, right? Now this should give me one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So so that if you have a, you know really 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 if i can spell really really long uh, sentence you don't have to count it here you can just do this and get the length see it has 34 characters in it you can imagine if it had like hundreds and hundreds of uh, words in it if you want to take the length of it you can just do it like this okay um let's move on to the second so that's that string length um all right so this uh, literals uh, we already have looked at it uh, in in one of the you know uh, the basic uh, classes way before so literals means if you have a, a variable the values that you can assign to that variable is called literal. So it's, it's like uh, the real values. Okay. So in this case, it's a sequence of uh, characters for string. If you take integers, it's a sequence of uh, numbers, right? So those are literals. Uh, and here you can do a string concatenation. So this, this is a, a special uh, uh, what do you call the term that we use for joining strings, joining strings together. Okay, so that's concatenation. So concatenation actually uh, not only for your string joining, it's, 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 for, it's basically telling whatever you have, you are joining it. So it could be uh, integers, it could be arrays, right? It could be any data type. So the, the, um, the joining operation, or oh, you are we are, you are putting everything together means it's the name is uh, the term is concatenation. Okay, 
So here string age is nine. Uh, I'm I have another a string called s. He is, and this is how you concatenate plus mark age plus mark. Okay, and so whenever there's a variable, you have to have plus marks in left and right. Uh, if it if it comes in the middle, okay. If it is like starting uh, in the string, you don't have to provide plus uh, in front. I'll I'll show an example. So so this is how you do a string concatenation. Okay. So here we will do a, a simple example. Um, string str. Um, she have me say good boy. So good. I could say uh, you know type. Person. Right, and here I would print out str or uh, for a you know for a change instead of str I would say message. All right, now what is not defined is type, right? So type could be a string. Uh, good. Right. If I run this, I will get uh, Shiham is a good person. Uh, and then if uh, you know, so th this is concatenation. And for some people, I might be a bad person also. Right. So basically, depending on the perspective you are like looking at me, I could be a good person or I could be, I could be a bad person as well. Uh, and also, if if this type or the variable that we need to concatenate, if that is come, that comes under, uh, not under, in front, you don't have to provide the plus mark in front, right? So basically, you are starting with that type. And plus and then a string. So this is how you do that. All right. And if it comes at the end, it's the opposite, right? So I, I will have person um, and then I will have a plus and then the type. All right. So, so that's that's about uh, concatenation. It's pretty simple. Um, let's move on to the next thing. All right. So, so this is uh, a special function called uh, char at that is provided by the string library. Uh, so, I hope you remember the topic. The topic is uh, the Java package. Uh, the packages. That is provided by Java for developers, uh, uh, you know, uh, to make the developers work easy. So here again, this is a string, and if you put a dot there, you can actually have the the methods that is provided by the string class, right? So here, this is a char at, uh, which is a function that is provided by the Java library. Um, let's let's look at an example that that way it will be a pretty easy to remember. So here, if you see now, this is a string variable, which is a um, all right. I need a international, say for example, international. And if I want to extract this t here. And print it out here, right? I would say str dot char at, and I need to provide the index. So so that's zero, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, right? That that T is on sixth index, right? Uh, so if I say six here, I should have uh, T printed out. All right. So that's how you like. Uh, um, get a uh, character at a specific index. And let's move on to the next one. So that's char at. And OK, so there is a, another method called equals. Equals ignore case. So we will look at this also. This this basically checks for the the equality. So okay, it's it's pointless that I type this one. So string s1 hello s2 hello. You can see the values are same, right? S3 has goodbye. S4 has capital hello. The, the same characters, but the casing is different. So. On the first line, I am asking for whether S1 is this one is equals to S2, which is this one, right? If I ask that question, what I get is an answer true. It, it's true, right? Hello is equal to hello. And the second one is S1 is equal to S3. So this comparing this one and this one, are they equal? No, because of that it's false. So here, um, here this is this one is comparing S one, hello, simple uh, capital H and simple E L L O, with this one, right? In that case also, it is you know by default it's providing false because it's it's actually checking for the cases as well, case in the sense whether it's uppercase lowercase. So if if the casing differs, it that is also not a match. OK. So that is why you get false here. And there is another equals method which ignores the case. See? So this is equals ignore case. And is it's asking for S4. S1 versus S4. Again, S1 versus S4. Because you are ignoring the case, uh, it doesn't matter uh, how these are, uh, as long as the characters are same, right? So basically, as for now, it's it, it's true. Okay, so that's about equals. Um, Boolean starts with. So this is starts with is a function and it returns Boolean, right? It takes in a string. So here, uh, if you take this example, foo bar is the string. I am asking whether it ends with bar. Okay, this is uh, this is like sim simple English. It asks whether this string ends with the with bar, right? So if you look at this, it is ending with bar, right? So that's true. Uh, for a deviation, if you ask if it ends with a r only, so without the bar b, if it ends with a r only. If you come here and check whether it ends with AR only, yes, it is ending, ending with an AR. So that would also be true. Okay. <coughs> Where it, uh, okay, so for this to become like false, you can give whatever not in the pattern of uh, these ending strings. So for example, if you, if you ask, if it ends with, uh, you know, foo, it will be false, right? Because it's not, it doesn't end with foo, it ends with, uh, you know, r, if it ends with a r, it ends with b a r, and it ends with o b a r, right? You, I think you get the point. So, and the opposite of it is, I am asking foo bar dot starts with, okay? Does this string start with foo? The, the answer is yes. Right. And the other one is if I ask, it starts with 
foo. This is simple foo, right? But it starts with a capital F. It is false, right? Now I am interested to know at this point whether this also has a igno case uh, variation of it. So I'm curious about it. So I, I what I will do is I will go to the code editor and ask that question there. So it's out foobar dot starts with foo. Um, okay, that's a print ln. And if I ask this question, I know it's a uh, false, right? And I, I'm interested to know whether it starts with has a igno character dot starts with. Right, if you look at this, here we have the equals igno case. We have compare to ignore case, right? So th those are different uh, ways of doing it. And you have different, different stuff like here, two lower case, two upper case, trim, subsequence, get chars, substring. We, we, I, we will look at this one, substring. Right, there are many, many stuff, uh, uh, many, many methods here. So ends with contains compared to. So it seems like there is uh, there isn't a default starts with with a uh, what do you mean? Uh, what do you call uh, the igno case, right? But equals has it. So equals igno case you have that, but for the starts with. It seems like you don't have, but you should you should be able to do it in a different way. Right? Now this is false, right? But what if if you want to check whether foo is starting with foo, but ignore the case here. Right? Uh, what I would do is first I'll make this to two lower case. Okay. So that be this foo bar becomes like this one, FUBA. Okay, capital F becomes simple F. Now it should, uh, you know, match, right? So instead of false, I should get a true. See, now actually you, you can think of, uh, you know, different solutions as to how to overcome your situation. <clears throat> and uh, let us move. All right, so here, so that starts with an ends with and then index of. Okay, index of is a function which takes in a character char and outputs the index of that character within a string. Right, so here, uh, this is an example. This one has the main is working in the office. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe the man is working in the office. So here s1 dot index of the will give the index that is starting, right? So here the is actually starting at the index zero. So the so because of that, it prints a zero. Here the s1 uh, last index of the. So the we have here one. Here another one, right? So. The last index of the is 23. So if we like uh, count this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so the last index of the is 23. <coughs> I hope you get it. Um, so uh, on that one itself, where is where are we? Where are we? All right, I'm, I'm gonna go, let's go. Let's go back. That's concatenation. 
equals index of okay so the last index last index of the is the last index of uh, last occurrence of the you can find it out and the starting uh, just take the starting index okay and if you had another the after this so the last index of the would be the index of that the okay uh, and i hope just like last index there should be a first index also i hope let's check that out so if you have any questions like that once you go through these uh, slides you might <coughs> you know depending on your thoughts you you will get like uh, uh you know light light bulb situation where you uh, you would need you will be curious about uh, finding out something shiham the shiham the again the another the right so we have the 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 so if i do a last index of the here i would get the index of this the right <coughs> not four bar see this is also a good thing because this string doesn't have the because of the output is minus 1 right so whenever you you are trying to find the last index or first index if you can't find something okay if you can't find a match that means it will give a minus 1 so that that's a good thing to you know uh, have it in your mind if you if you search for a string if it does not match what comes out is the minus 1 okay so instead of foo bar i would target the light bulb and last index of the so i should get the index of this one all right you can post the video later and uh, count this out it should be 34 so index of this t all right and i was curious about finding out the first index so no nope. <coughs> so here it's it's the index of right so it's not like uh, explicitly saying it's the first index it's it's basically index of i should get uh, this thing i hope yeah seven right so that that's uh 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right so that's the seventh index so instead of first index of it says index of okay so if you want to uh, you know find a specific characters index <coughs> that would also be a uh, seven okay um and if you find e so that should be the index of this one which is 9 all right okay let's move on all right so the next point is uh, the substring all right substring is basically you are taking a substring so it's from a string you are taking a portion of it right so here on <clears throat> the first example in the first first example i am telling s1 s1 is this guy and substring from 23rd index so if you go to go like count the 23rd 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 like 23rd starts with here t and b of is right so from starting from there take everything that is following okay so that that's this thing if you give substring and only the index of it what uh, it will do is it will start with this index and take the rest of the characters in the string okay and here we are doing a different thing here we are starting with index 23 and 
going up to index 26. So this means like 23, 24 and 25. Okay. And you should not take in 26. You, you should exclude it. All right. You should exclude the uh, index that is provided here. See from 23 start here T uh, you go up to 26 so T H E so this is 26th one. Uh, I should uh, just uh, verify that let's see. <clears throat> um, Hassan is a generous person. Right, okay, so here, <clears throat> this is about Hassan, sir. And I would say Hassan dot substring. Right, so if if I want to, you know, uh, start with this one, I would say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's the 12th index. Right, I would get generous person. All right, there we go. And <clears throat> if I want to start from here, that's 12. And I need to take like GEN. Let's see if that is uh, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if I do a 15, I want to see whether I also get the E also. <clears throat> no, right? So basically this means you start from 12, okay, 13 and 14, that's all. You don't get the 15th index, right? So th this is something you have to remember. This is something you have to remember. All right, so that basically is you have to exclude exclude the ending index ending right which is 15 here <clears throat> all right so let's move on so that's about substrings and there are, there are some other methods also like concat. Concat stands for the concatenation. See, one space and you are concatting two, which means one space two here. And here is a, another one called replace. So one replace. What is the character that you want to replace? Okay, N. What is, what do you want to replace with W? Okay, so instead of N, you would have W here. So instead of N, you have W here. So that's O, O, W, E, right? Instead of N, you are having W. So that is replacing. You will, basically, if you are presented with some ish, uh, some problems, uh, you will have to use these techniques to, you know, uh, provide solutions. Uh, normally string stuff, they are like pretty common. You will get uh, <clears throat> questions and you will, uh, most probably the, the solving problems will have uh, one or many of these, uh, you know, methods like string, substring, uh, concatenation, index of them, stuff like that. Um, so here, uh, one trim, trim means you are basically taking the, you know, unnecessary spaces. So here in this case, one and you have an ending space, right? So what this will do is it will remove that ending space. OK, although you can't see this, uh, what happened, what will happen is uh, so this has four characters, one, two, three, four. After you do the trim, you will have only three characters. One, two, three. That's all. No space there. OK, and so this is this is uh, important. Say for example, uh, if you are filling a form and you don't expect a space at the end of a sentence or a input, 
in your server side code in your code itself you can do the clean up right so user may put in a space at the end in your code when you take in the input you can just trim it out and here okay so this one string dot value of 100 uh, is 100 uh, this one is uh, two upper case and two lower case i'll just uh, showcase them here okay so this is a sentence right uh, so if you just uh, print this out what you get is uh, you know hasan is a generous person and if you want to make it a you know all upper case you would do a two upper case right all right you get the upper case uh, version of it so for example now instead of two upper case so this was the original one original one right so you had this now it became this and just like that you have like two lower case right which does the opposite of it okay all lower cases and all right so that's that uh all right so here <coughs> string buffer or string builder so there are two like uh, utility classes again so this is this is to do, you know uh, create and uh, uh, building strings to build strings Uh, so these are used to build string values. Both are identical, but string buffer is thread safe. Um, what do you mean by thread safe? We we need to talk about a different topic called threads in a later session, hopefully. Um, okay, so string buffer SB one. So it's a it's a class, right? We are creating a, uh, an object of that class. We are passing in a default value. or the for the constructor so sb1 will hold this hello okay and we can then do the appending sb1 dot append precedent so that means it's like now hello precedent okay because hello we had already and we are appending or uh, concatenating uh, space precedent with the hello okay and here i am printing it out so to print out you would have to do this thing to string right sb1 is an object um and you have to you know convert the representation or the result to string so when you do a to string it will it will get the get all these things out and uh, nicely uh, you know put it together Okay, so this is how you use string buffer. You can basically you can have a homework to read read about this string buffer, right? And a similar one is string builder, SB one. So you are doing the same thing here, right? All right, you are providing a value and appending space builder, and you output it. So it's the same thing basically. Uh, so okay, uh, I'll just uh, show you some of the stuff that we can do with that. Uh, not only uh, these things. Okay, I have Hassan here. I would do a string builder. Right, SB one equal new string builder, and I would pass in that variable. And SB one dot here you have uh, you know tons of um, methods here right so basically see this append takes an i right so that's your uh, integer so if you do a uh, 20 append 20 okay i will have the result here um sb1 dot to string
right? Hassan is a generous person and you have the 20 here. So that's, that's you can basically append a uh, integer there and you can append some other stuff as well, say for example, a double value, right? All right, uh, and let's see what else we can do here instead of append. So you have append, you can append with a character array string, right? You have the two string also so that we looked at it. Oh, you have index of, right? So basically just like in uh, a normal string, you can uh, ask for index of str, say for example. So if I ask for index of, uh, generous, right? I should get some uh, print f. It should be print l then. All right. If just like in string, string builder also gives this functionality. Generous. At, it actually starts with the index twelve. All right. And what else we have? Uh, sb1 dot so that's uh, index of last index of delete wow that's also a interesting one and you can insert at some point also you can reverse that also so that that's pretty cool so if you do let's say this one Oh, what you get is it's in reverse order, right? So that's the exclamation that this is N O S N O S. Okay, so that's basically reversed. Um, and what else can you do? You can basically, uh, you know, um, um, just go through this. So here we have the ability to delete also. So if you want to delete something. Uh, you have to give an index, uh, starting index and an end index. I will just blindly give like 12 uh, to 16. So I think it's uh, it starts with somewhere here and goes up to 15. So 12, 13, 14 and 15. So you, I'm expecting four characters to go out here. Uh, just like that. So these four characters are gone, right? So just like that, you can just play around with it. Um, I'm not going to do that more. And we come to the class of scanner, right? So scanner is basically that uh, what, what we looked at actually, right? So here is an example. Uh, enter your name, enter your age. Okay, here I want to uh, show you something and we'll stop it there. Uh, we'll look at, look at collection on the next class, hopefully. Uh, let's do a scan example and let's uh, disperse. Um, come here, scanner, scanner is equal to new scanner. Oh, class, scanner. It would take a system in, right? We have to, uh, you know, import this guy. Import class. Okay, so that's actually coming from the package, the Java Util Scanner. Okay. On the scanner, uh, so here we are taking in a, a string and an integer, right? Uh, I think last week we looked at uh, some next line or something. So we we'll just uh, here we will take two inputs from the user, which is enter your name 
and enter your age and just print this out and close the scanner right because scanner is a uh, because we are creating a scanner scan actually is a ex is an expensive uh, resource that we should uh, close this out once we use that okay so i would now ask for for example the scanner so i am telling system out println enter your your name and string name is equal to scanner dot next line right at this point if i print this out uh, hi Enter your name. All right, so that uh, next line gives me the ability to uh, provide some sentences with space, right? I hope that just the next did not give that facility for me. So I need uh, all of you to like, uh, you know, focus really well. We are, we are just at the end of this session. Um, so if I do here, she has space some today. Yeah. So basically, just uh, doing the next only takes in up to the point where you specify a space, right? So if you had like uh, this in the same thing, it would give that. But if you have a space like Hassan. So, so what you get is Hassan only, right? To get the get the whole thing, you would do a next line. Okay. Hassan, so okay. So that's that's one thing uh, that you have to remember. And now I want to take the age as well. So I would do a s out enter your age okay and so that should be an integer integer age is equal to scanner dot next int right at this point i would say hello hi shiham or hi hassan uh yeah and a plus and a dot or a comma you are this many age right so i think this should work let's see to your age 34 all right so that's you are getting it but as i can remember if you do an integer up front and you want to have a second one for example uh, some um, let's say legs again Hannah dot int uh, next int s out legs legs all right age uh now it's actually i didn't uh, give a message right i'm 
I am actually expecting an next int. Uh, so that's uh, 45. All right, that that's that gives me. If I do a next line here, string. See, uh, it, it doesn't actually wait for it, right? So uh, I'll just prove this sysout.println uh, enter your age. Okay, enter your name, Shiham. Enter your age. Okay, so that's this age. So that's 34. And see, it doesn't come here it, into your age to probably into your age to. Watch carefully, Shiham. Into your age is this guy 34. See, after this point, I'm doing an extint. I'm getting the value, printing out this one. Hi, Shiham, and you are 34. And then I am doing this, enter your age too. But it doesn't come here and wait for it. OK? So so this was this was a problem uh, that, that we encountered last week. And I, I suggested, or I put in a link of the problem and the solution. So that was a stack overflow link. You, know, you would find if you just scroll back in the uh, chat history. Uh, so the solution is actually uh, is to provide another next line like that. Right? If you do another next line, then uh, I'll show you if this works. Then what you what we can do is. Um, Basically, if this works, I'll explain. Right, that should work. Enter your age, thirty-four. Okay, enter your age too. See, it's asking for the second one. All right. So here, in this case, the problem was actually uh, I read it up. You do the next line. It takes the name fine. So when you do a next int. It actually doesn't, you know, consume at the end uh, a an enter character. It's so basically, uh, you know, once a line uh, processing is completed, it should consume. The program should consume and enter. It's just like you are, uh, you know, pressing the enter key on your keyboard, right? So that is how it knows. Uh, to take the next input, right? But in next int, when you invoke next int, it doesn't happen actually automatically. So because of that, you will have to invoke it like this. Okay, you you will have you, once you do this, what happens is uh, the next int it was waiting for an input. You are giving that input like the enter button. So it will it will consume that uh, new line, and now it will come and wait at this point, asking for a input from the user. So so th that is how you you can overcome because you don't normally get this uh, issue because in all of the examples we stop with this point. Okay, if <laughs> you you get an uh, you know name. And you get a age or something like that, and you print it out, and you're all fine. But when you try to, you know, take another string value like next line, that is when the problem comes. So the solution is actually to provide a uh, extra next line like that. All right. I hope that makes sense, and uh, we can wrap it up. It's at seven o'clock. Um, 
Okay, you all can have a good day uh, and everybody can go to bed now. Thank you. If you have any questions, just uh, uh, post it in. Okay, what's, what is meant by print F? Oh, actually I did not intend to do that, but let's see what print F is. So if you want to, you know, see something like that, redundant print F call, right? Uh, where is it? Uh, go to declaration. Not that, go to declaration. Okay, so here, uh, actually you should, uh, go, maybe you can just, uh, you know, search in the web as well. So here is an ex ex explanation, right? So if you like, uh, Whenever you want to know more, something more about this, you could just, uh, if you want to, you know, uh, traverse this uh, documentation of Java, you can go to and go to the declaration, right? So here, it's it's basically taking a format and some arguments, right? So. So this is uh, telling, okay, uh, here's the param format, a format string as uh, described in this place, right? So, so basically it's a util format HTML. You can just uh, maybe read it up in this one, uh, Java printf. So it's, it should be basically how you can format the string. Uh, so also here is an example. So here we specify the formatting rules using format parameter. Right? So the first parameter is actually uh, something with this type of formatting. So this S means it's a string. So let's, let's uh, just read through this methodically. Rules start with the, uh, you know, percentage character. Let's look at a quick example before we dive into details of the various formatting rules. Hello, here is a, uh, you know, a formatting character. It starts with uh, a dollar mark and S, right? And an exclamation. Here, this one is basically a new line. And what you are passing so here, after the comma, you are passing a string. So this will replace this place, right? So that is how this uh, hello world comes in, right? So just like that. So here is a string. Here is how you replace a string. Just like that, you can replace like uh, uh, decimals, um, floating point numbers and dates. So if I, if I like want to uh, show you, uh, something here, for example, hello dollar s and I could say Shiham here. Oh, see, this is going to go go through the scanner. I don't want that. Stop it. See, now this is hello, Shiham, right? So uh, how we normally do is like this, right? 
you do a shout uh, hello and uh, I would have a different string right hello Shiha maybe yeah so this is this is the next way of doing it normally this is how we have looked at it right you could do something like like this hello Shiha uh, you are and you can have a dollar d yes all right so the first argument is actually this one and the second argument you can give like 34 I hope you got it. So, hello Shiham, right? Instead of this S, this first argument comes in. You are 34 years old, means this corresponds to this one. Okay. And if you want, like a, you know, a third one also, the number of legs, uh, that's also going to be a D because it's a, it's a uh, decimal uh, value. So, you can provide D like this. all right so i hope you understand it just uh, let me know in the uh, chat and we can wrap it out all right uh, okay thank you for joining jazakumullah khairan um, uh, let's uh, finish this off. Have a good day.